Well, hello everyone. This is me, Nick Michael, like and the unfortunate Steve Fraser. You are not happy right now, are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm not fucking happy. <laughs> well, happy Halloween to all those that are listening. I'll be having a happier day than we are. Well, you're really <laughs> just salty right now. This one. We haven't even started yet. I just watched it two days ago. I'm, sal- I'm salty enough right now. Okay? <laughs> I can't wait. It's go. Oh boy. Well, Buck- buckle up, buckaroos. The hell with this movie. <laughs> This is our commentary, because everyone's been asking for it for months now. So here it is, Halloween Kills. We're doing the theatrical cut because... You can't stand to spend an extra ten minutes? No. (laughs) Ten seconds. I looked up the differences. Oh, there's extra gore and a little tag at the end. Maybe a couple extra lines of dialogue. There's nothing worth a damn. Extra gore? I feel like it's already pretty gory. So, anyway, guys. Here we go. You want it? Here you go. This is Halloween Kills, our commentary. You can follow along with the subtitles turned on. Get your time time step over to zero to sync up, and we'll get going with the countdown. So in three, two, one, play. Hopefully you've all uh, been able to catch up on our Halloween 2018 commentary. It's been four years. Which... Well, no. <clears throat> close to it. Yeah. Which is... Yeah, because we did it about a year after January it came January following the release. When so... The disc hit. That one, uh, if you recall, we were not fond of. Very uh, heavy on the script problems. Very directionless and not focused very well. So the very biggest first drafty. The biggest problem, and I know that we're going to talk about this ad nauseum today. Um, the biggest problem is the fact that the premise of the first one is solely based on the idea that Michael Myers gives two shits about Laurie Strode 40 years later when he should not. No. And also, subplot, they didn't know how to write Laurie Strode as a trauma survivor. It was just weird. Mm -hmm. So, the entire events of the 2018 movie, which set up this trilogy of whatever, whatever, (laughs) uh, <clears throat> are it's like a it's like a, a logic problem that's faulty from the start. Therefore, right. you can't even make additional arguments because you started with a faulty premise. Yes. So, and as we go along this thing, they do point out exactly what we brought up in the first film. And Michael doesn't give a shit. And everything which just happened since they ran into each other in the first film. So just. So this is the first time we've actually seen that boyfriend again, right? Pudding phone man. Pudding phone. Uh, (laughs) Damn it. I recently, like a few days ago, I recently rewatched our commentary. And uh, that scene where that chubby kid gets it is one of the best scenes in the movie. Yeah. And when you called this kid, when you said that his phone got dumped in the pudding. Her phone, yeah. Her phone, right. I... Man, that tickled me. <laughs> that tickled me. So, I do care. I, I like the idea of the trilogy being like a continuation of the yeah. night of. Yeah. Much like Halloween 2 was a continuation of Halloween sure. 1. Um, it's not laying in a shack somewhere. For one year! <laughs> I actually just recently listened to Halloween 5 again just yeah. for fun because it's the best one we've ever done. Um, they seem to apply with Halloween ends. He's been sitting in the sewer for like five years. Oh, so God. That's going to be something. Um, <clears throat> but again, all of the, the events of this one and the new one, which is coming out in, as we record matter this, of days, matter yeah. of days, um, probably by the time this drops, it may already be out. Uh, I don't know. Like, I do feel like they... Uh, they they're trying really hard, and it, it just doesn't it doesn't work because... The, again, the, it's it's faulty logic, and like I don't even mind this flashback sequence. Because um, when, when this, this debuted on Peacock, day and date and everything, it's like okay, I watched the opening sequence. That was all I watched until the the, the other day. So you like, watched through this? Like, this? It's a fine short film. I'm fine. Done. Roll credits. I'm done. <laughs> After this, you watch the 
This part? I watched the opening the opening pre-title stuff. Okay. There's all this flashback stuff. Okay. And then that was it. Okay. And that's all, all I watched for like the last year. That's the only thing I ever saw until I popped in the disc the other day. Got it. Like, it's fine short film. I had, okay, fine. Done. Now, I this... Need anymore. This is a little bit of a retcon. Well, yeah. There's more cops than there were in the first film. All we had was Bracket. It's all the guys showing up out of nowhere now. They they did do a pretty good job of making Michael look like Michael from the first one. A little bit, yeah. I'll have some tweeting some things later on. This is going to be, this year starting here, it's going to, one of the things that drives me nuts about this film, they just kind of keep expositing the first Halloween film over and over and The 78. Over. Yeah. They just take times like, as if, you didn't watch any of the other, anything else Halloween. This is the first Halloween movie you're seeing, so we have to explain to you every single thing that happened in the continuity up to this point. I don't need this. Right. We've all seen Halloween. It's been 40 the, years. The, 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 pre, the one before this, how many hundreds of millions of dollars did it make? You don't need this. I mean, you're, you're a major thing about expositing dialogue yeah. stuff. It's not, not, not your flavor. Right, they're... Like, it really, really drives there, me nuts. There's a place for it, but one of those like, you just have to have characters just explain things out without a natural, organic point in the scene. Well, right, like, if... You're just trying to tell the audience what's going on when the audience already has a good idea of what the hell's already happened in this continuity. That's the thing. It's when... When you're literally only saying it so that the audience can be aware. Yeah. You know, like... When... When one brother says to another brother, like, you know that mom's an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, one brother would never say that right, to another right, brother right. because right. the brother already knows. Right, right. But you're right, there's already the kids more... Can really be out without a parent? I don't know. Well, it's 1978, yeah. I'm still a yeah. little no, quirky they, on that. No, they would. They absolutely would. They go out now without a parent. Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but again, so we've gone back and... Okay, fine, you want to you wanna piece together some new information. Yeah. Um, but, like, this Lonnie character never existed in, in 78. He... he I don't think. He was in two different places. He was one of the kids that knocked over Tommy when he had the, the pumpkin walking out of the school. Oh, okay. And he's the one that Loomis scared off of from the Myers house. Oh, the, the get, your, get your ass away yeah, from here. Yeah, okay. that was it. I didn't realize it was that's, the same that's kid. That's the only thing. That's why they ha have a specific look for the character here. Because they're matching from the original actor. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but you're right there's more cops now than yeah. there ever were in the first film yeah and also I mean well, but it's again just to like have this was this other cop the the one that's lying dead in the street in the present day which I think is the one he was on the, the one left. who got stabbed by the doctor before he right. hijacked and right. tried to drive over to the compound right which Michael. I, I think is supposed to be the one on the left the sandy haired one he, yeah, uh, I yes, think yes, yes. Now he did not appear in no. the original film. The only cop we got in the original film was Bracket. That's it. That's period. the only they one. Didn't cast anybody else. Okay. They didn't even allude to him having anybody else. Right, because it's small town America. Right. Right. But f fill in a little extra details that we have going over in like the first or second film that Halloween night seventy eight, I believe, was we confirmed that it was a Tuesday. So these kids are still out of trick or treating. Probably I don't know. Was it ten thirty at night? Probably. I mean, by the time Lori and Annie got to the babysitting getting it, it was pitch black outside as it was. So probably, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock? Well, yeah, I was going to say, it gets dark at like 6.30. Yeah, so probably at least 7 o'clock, if not a shade later. So it's like, we've gone through all the other stuff in the film. And in the original film, so it's probably at least past 10 o'clock. These kids are out at this time on a school night. It just, I don't know, it just brings you're, a little strange to it's me. It's funny, you're, you're actually turning into me on that, like... 
I never really thought about it. I was even saying I was saying I'm just saying that straight <clears throat> up in my head now. Sure. That I brought up the whole thing is like okay they're out here without any parents and now they're out real late at night on a school night. So I don't know. Right, because now this is supposed to be taking place after the events of one, yes. right? <laughs> Lumis so has he, shot him six or seven times. He's got right, depending on which. And well, no, at this point it's only six. Six. So um, he's, he's just gone off into the breeze. And he fell off the balcony. Yeah. And Lori's on her way to the hospital. Potentially, we don't know. Oh the right. The film ends with right, just right. Luma's like right. Scared we to don't. Shit. You're right. We don't know. And he's out in the wind. One of the biggest complaints that I usually have, as I'm sure y'all know mm. if you're regular listeners, is how every time that you have a sequel, everybody feels like they have to go backwards in order to go forwards. Yeah, definitely in the Elm Street stuff. Um, Saw, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, even a little bit of Friday the 13th. Like, there's a little bit... In, in, in some it, entries, yeah. Yeah, it, it just kind of... So... I don't I don't know if we need like the whole reason that we have this backstory right now is just for this cop to have some kind of a story that doesn't the, get resolved in this film whatsoever in the present right right he accidentally killed his own partner so he's got trauma is okay he, well, well he's a terrible fucking cop I mean well no shit I mean he's scared shitless the guy is standing seven feet away from him. He couldn't just walk up to him and shoot him in the head or something. He's, he's acting like he's... He, if he makes a false move, Michael's going to slit his throat or something. He's like, he's just strangling him. Just go up and shoot him or some shit. Right. It just Walk up and shoot him in the kneecap faulty or logic whatever, yeah. For, for someone who's supposed to be a trained officer, it just seems a little contrived to me that this guy would be a cop, but he'd be panicking this much in the situation. No, just yeah, thing. I, the film is filled with a, a thousand little things that irk the crap out of me because they just fall off in any logic, any any sense of reality. But it's just annoying enough that, like, <clears throat> or just just um, I don't know what the word is, uh, nostalgic enough, I guess, that the average fan goes ooh and f doesn't think about it, you know. They really did a good job with this guy, I think. Yeah, they did some, some guy, guy who looked a bit like him. That thing they put some appliances on him, but and that's his real voice. They didn't like. I, I I don't know if it's his voice specifically. I think it is. Whatever it is, I, it's decent. It's, yeah, it's it's no worse than the other impersonators you've gotten in the franchise with H two O and, and right. twenty eighteen film I, did voiceovers. Yeah, I think I think it's a pretty great likeness actually. Right. And that was supposed to be like this big surprise, right? In this this movie, um, a little bit. I think I was people were talking about that aspect. I, I think that was probably what got me to at least watch the opening sequence. Just like, oh, let me see what this, because we, I, as you listened to before, it's like they had that idea for the first film, and I thought they'd do like a whole like digital deep fake random crap right. or something that would look awful. It's like they. At least had enough sense to do a, a practicality and find someone who looked a fair bit like Pleasance to kind of double them from some good angles. Yeah, I don't know. Every, the The entire premise of this sequence is to explain to you how Michael was captured. Right. Um, and... Ben and try to lay like the thing with Lonnie there and the cop, just have a thread for them to follow through the rest of the film. Which we'll it's thin. We'll, we'll get we'll get into it's it. It's thin. They're, they're, and then they again they nostalgically like cast all these people like from the original you right. Know, Brackett and Lindsay and what's her name? Charles Cyphers, Kyle Richards. Um, they couldn't get the kid. Well, well from what I remember hearing is that. The original kid played Tommy Doyle. I don't think 
I don't think he acted anything in a long, long, long time. Yeah, I think he kind of raised this thing that he wasn't getting contacted to be in it, and they just cast Anthony Michael Hall regardless. I don't know why they wouldn't try. You know what I mean? Bring him in and have him audition to a screen test something. I mean, I think Kyle Richards had been doing things here and there. I think think she was on like a reality show for a time or something like that. So it's not like she was like hardest working B movie actress out there or some something along those lines. You know. These two were in the previous movie. Um, they were? They were. I don't uh, even fucking remember. There's a scene where Michael is walking through the neighborhood and killing random people, right? Yeah, huh? And those two come out of their house and they're like arguing as they get into the car. Oh, well, whatever. And uh, so that's just a little callback. Like, oh, if you were watching the last one, you might remember these. Two. That's where yeah, they were well. going. Oh. Yeah. whoop de doo You know what I mean? It's so stupid. Yeah. Well, there's... Everything about this the, movie is stupid. The least stupid thing. I mean, it's... <laughs> I, really? You're in a bar and you're going to complain about that? Yeah, I just... Why are you saying this? Why? Why? Is that the type of thing that the bartender normally tells a random customer? No. <laughs> they don't tell people about anyone's personal backstories unless there's an already conversation going or something. Michael Myers isn't even conversation in here at this point in time. Other than by the bartender. Right. Who brought it. I mean, but now Hall's again. going to get up here and he's going to be fucking. It's exposition, monologuing. right? Monologuing. Like he said that they get together every Halloween to, like, remember or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's just. Uh, he looks terrible, by the way, from the, you know, Rat, Brad Pack well, days. Yeah. It's, he looked better when he was doing Dead Zone 20 years before. This, I don't know. But. So this is, it kind of brings up the things like, did none of these people ever leave this town ever? Does anyone just stay here until the end of time like it's purgatory? Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, if you experience this, this level of trauma that you're can, can, trying to convince us you've gone through, would you just stay in the town forever and just linger around the exact same memories of the whole thing for the rest of your life? Also, if all of these people are from Haddonfield... Right. They probably already know the story. Right. As we've been... Like, I always claim that they don't, but all the movies seem to... They're indicate... trying to convince us that everyone does. Right, exactly. In which but case... they're trying to do it both ways here, that everyone has to go through a monologue to explain what happened 40 years ago. Why is like he... Like, nobody out? does, but they're trying to say, like, everyone does because they sit around rem reminiscing about it all the time. Why is he telling this story? Right. Everybody either already knows it or doesn't give right. a shit. Right. And again... Like, are you telling me this because I didn't just watch Halloween 78 or haven't seen it 100 times? Right. And the thing is, like, why is Nurse Marion Chambers here? She was in the original film only in the opening sequence, the, 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 the first post-opening right. credit sequence. And she's not, she never shows up in Haddonfield in the first film whatsoever. She has no other involvement except for the fact that Michael jumped on the station wagon, scared her away, and then stole the car. That's it. She doesn't have any trauma. How does she know these people? Loomis might have known them, but he... Again, if you're just basing off the events of the first film, he had no interaction with the kids, Marion Chambers never showed up in Haddonfield, how does she know any of these people? They don't establish that. She's right. just here. Right. She just happens to know them because the, the first film... They all existed in the first film, despite the fact they had no interaction or relation that... Smith's Grove was like hundreds of miles right, away. Right, I was going to say, Smith's Grove was so like far away. Like half the state away from these people. She wasn't even here to witness the events of the film to have any connection to these people. Right. Why is she there? Great right. question. Exactly. Just, It's very annoying. It's like, we're just going to bring everyone back just for the sake of bringing everyone back. We're not going to logic to why they know each other or why they're involved with one another. Why 
every single one of these traumatized people has never left this town. By the way, when I said that that nurse doctor couple was in the first film, I meant the 2018, not... Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. First film of this trilogy. Right, Let's right, right. Let's try to... Because they don't make it easy for us. They called it Halloween. It seems the film that they're already making. They made it a sequel to. Right. Um, <clears throat> Which we've been through in the, the new screen commentary. So if you want to check that out, you're going to talk about that there too. I would like to reiterate <laughs> that Lori, the character Lori in 2018, Halloween, mm -hmm. spent her entire life building... This, a panic, death, a, this a, death house. A panic room. Yeah. With the intention of burning it down. Yes. Her own home. Yes. Who decides they're going to burn down their own home? Right. Because of a trauma that lasted three hours, 40 years ago. Yeah. Granted, I'm not, I'm not it's putting, like, yeah. I'm not saying that You're that's not, I'm not saying that that's not worthy of mental trauma. Right. I'm saying it's the, the it's, film didn't build enough a bridge between the the 78 film and the 2018 film to really kind of understand the complexities of the whole thing. They just told her she's traumatized. This is what's happening now. No logical person builds a house with the intention of burning it down. Right. In my opinion, right. regardless of what trauma you've been through. Also, as the son of a fireman, yes, I can tell you. That Michael would not still be alive in this basement after that Smoke amount inhalation. of burning. That is just a logical fallacy. I mean, this looks like backdraft. Yeah, which sure. Backdraft is, I mean, an Academy Award winning best picture quality type movie. Yeah. Whereas this is... I have it on laser disc. Not. Oh, God, I love backdraft so much. Meanwhile, he just walks out of this house that he's right. been roasting in. The mask would be melted to his face. Right. The thing I'm going to get into here is that a lot, a lot of people are like so gaga with this one because it was so gory and so absolutely brutal. But the fact is, this isn't Michael Myers. This isn't how Michael Myers is is been portrayed in anything before this. Well, let's think now. In the first movie, he killed three people. Right. Right. So he killed Annie by strangulation. He strangled her, then slit her. Okay, he did slit her with a. Th okay. Yeah. Um, Stabbed the boyfriend. The right. The PJ's boyfriend, and then Paul. She's he right. Then strangled PJ herself. So she also was not stabbed. She was just strangled? Yeah, I, I think she was strangled with the uh, telephone cord. Right. She was trying to call uh, right. Lori and everything and got... <clears throat> so we've got two stabs, a strangle, and I believe when he was going after Jamie Lee at the end, he had the knife. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, I, so, and that just it, was it, what he had laying around. Right. My, oh, I guess, and then his sister was right. also a stab. Go ahead. But as I, I'm going to get it, I mean, just in that sequence there and stuff like that, it feels more like they're trying to make Jason Voorhees, not Michael Myers. It doesn't feel like how he moves, right. how he reacts, how he attacks people. In the first film, Michael is very methodical. He fixates on someone, he, he stalks them down, he does his patience, then he kills them at the opportune time, then moves on to the next person. He doesn't go around killing eight different people in a mass fucking murder at one time I mean that, that that is a Jason Voorhees style thing and is Brackett really still on the payroll 40 years later I, it's like, I, I found he was in this thing it's like I didn't even know he was still alive Cyphers? Cyphers oh yeah I don't know the, I haven't seen him since like fucking I don't know yeah he does conventions every once in a while the, I was like and been in a Carpenter film since like 84 or 83 or something. I don't know. It was a long ass time ago. I don't know if this had to be his 
gratuitous as it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, do we really need a, a surgery? Mm. You know, this this detailed of a surgery? I don't know. The question is, why is she wearing a Christmas sweater? A Christmas sweater, sweater on right. Is that, drove, drove, that drove me fucking nuts. That's here. her Christmas that's her Halloween costume? Mm. Doesn't make any sense. No. Much is like the theme of this entire film. I'm just getting warmed up, man. You got a hearse? I would I would absolutely drive a hearse, by the way. I don't recognize that movie. Yeah. Well, this is a very interesting couple. Yeah. They have yeah. no purpose in the film whatsoever. There's just a gratuitous gore kill scene for no reason. So this gentleman was sleeping. I suppose it looked like a sleep apnea right. thing on his face. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. So he's sleeping, something wakes him up, he comes downstairs, and immediately drinks wine and starts playing with toys. Yeah. And it looks like they partake in a lot of alcohol. Hmm. It's like, again... <laughs> There's this dual mentality to the Mike Myers character. Sure. He's walking around town, like, randomly killing people in their homes. Just coming across people randomly with, with no logic whatsoever. Which, to me, that makes more sense than the other half of him that is stalking the woman that he saw one time right. 40 years ago. Like, but it's like how did he end up... What's he doing in their bathroom? What's the purpose to it? He's right. just here because whatever. What is, is he, does he need to take a leak? That's a decent reaction, yeah. actually. Ow. 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 <laughs> yeah. Again, it, it, feels, the, it, it feels, looks great. If, yeah, but it... it I mean, just watching all the kills and just the, what they're doing with Michael in this film just feels Friday the 13th to me. It does, because so far he's he, he left Lori's house, which clearly is not near their house because they saw the fire trucks. Right. And, and... They're showing a lot of eyes, too, which we had a lot of problems with. I'm still very confused how, in the last film, he got from Smith's Grove all the way back here and then discovered her house. Well, I mean, they were transporting him. Right. And he escaped from the transport. Right, but it's not like he had a smartphone. And not like they said they were, he was at Smith's Grove. They just, he was just at some right. freaking nut house. Somewhere where she was close enough to go watch the transfer. Right. I don't know. It's, it's, what? I they don't like know. to explain so much, but then there's so much others like, oh, we don't have to explain that. Right. You know, it doesn't make any sense. It's like this. Again, in a vacuum, this is a fine scene, but it doesn't have any bearing on the story or the plot. It has no logic from how Michael got here to, to the next beat in the entire film. It just, there's no, you can cut this whole thing out. It doesn't affect the film. You still follow the entire story perfectly because it has no story bearing what happens in the scene whatsoever. Other than the idea that he is progressing from one location to another. Right. Which I think they try to make reference to here. Like, they put the pieces together that he's uh, trying to go back to his own home or something. But again, would he even remember the exact route? Or, right. you know? What's he doing? Is he testing knives? Yeah, I don't know. It just feels weird to me. Just 
Everything with Michael in this film just feels weird. Just, just everything just felt off. The characterization just feels weird to me. Again, the first one just had a methodology to Michael. You could follow it very easily, what he's doing and why he's doing it. To certain, I mean, the underlying motive thing was much more Loomis's sort of spinning a tale of blackest eyes, devil's eyes, stuff like that. But you can understand where Michael's going A to B to C and why he's following. He follows this person. He follows this one. He kind of there's there's a linear progression of what he's doing from one person to the next. Why he's stalking certain people. This one just feels like it just whoever's inside of the frame he just goes after. It doesn't make any sense to me. And that really started in the original Halloween 2. Yeah. Uh, which doesn't exist in this no, timeline. No, 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 no. But they did recreate that scene with the lady in the sandwich in, right. in and, 2018. And yeah, I mean this one still, still goes along and starts cherry-picking little ideas for all the sequels that you say aren't good enough to be in this continuity, and they suck. I mean, you're still pivoting from Halloween 2 by having 60% of the film is set in a freaking hospital. Angry mob violence is all Halloween 4. Right. Clear as day. I don't know who and, that's supposed to be. Well, I don't know either. Oh, I forgot about this black, black cowboy. cowboy. Uh, so Cameron is the chubby the kid? No, uh, Cameron is the boyfriend. Oh, okay. And he is the son of Lonnie? Apparently, yes. Okay. So Michael killed all of these people. Yes. That thing said 12.07 a.m., by the way, on his phone. Jeez. Yeah. This film probably started around 11 o'clock at night. Are you hungry for some popcorn? Absolutely. I love popcorn. <laughs> Yeah, that's our street, because... Yeah, I don't know. It it seems very... Hmm. Like, let's all just learn about it on the news. I mean, I... Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Again, let's show you events from number one. Yeah. That kid That's is... That's from the yeah. last one. <laughs> the little asshole kid, yeah. Yeah. Where's his franchise? It's gotta be? Why does it got to be Michael? Nah, uh, because the entire film's stupid. Okay. Uh, yeah, I bet these two never thought that their little 30 seconds, if that, in the first movie was going to lead to, like, real speaking roles in the in this one. Wow. Oh. And clear. why is he in this car? It's clear. It becomes clear from this one that they had no idea what the hell they were going to do for a second movie as it was, because they wanted to make a trilogy, but they had no idea what to do with this film. And we all know that in a trill in in a three act structure, the middle act is the hardest one to write. Yeah. Because you have to come up with things for people to do. 
You need the story. Well, the thing is, usually the second one in most trilogies is usually the best one. Well, in in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it was. Two Towers, Empire Strikes Back. A lot of people say Evil Dead 2 is the best one, even though that's not your flavor. Godfather 2, everyone says Godfather, that's the best yeah. one. So, I mean, usually the second one, even though it's, the, it's a mountain to climb, they usually just they get up on the Everest and... Wave a flag saying, hey, I Back made Back to it. the Future 2, not the best one in the trilogy, but... No... I don't understand why Michael was sitting in that car. You know what I mean? Well, isn't that, it doesn't end up being Michael himself. But the fact is, plot point ends up being in the exact one car of the person who comes out to actually right. leave the place. Well, everyone else was going to stay there for another, like, four hours. Well, that's what I was getting at. Right. Why was anybody in their one car? Right. And how did he get in the car when then it's a BMW clearly has a security system? And the alarm didn't go off or nothing. That's the truck from Chainsaw 2. I mean. <laughs> Bright lights. Aesthetically, there are elements of this movie that look really, really great. Mm. But again, the story's so terrible. Right. I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like the 2018 film looked a lot better. I think it just... Do we think it's just a, a product of it? They, the, the 2018 film least was felt to me a little bit more like they had... Is that... Uh, Ron Howard's brother? What's his name? No, no. I know it. I know it's not, but it no. reminds me of him. The guy that looks like Donald Pleasance mixed with Danny DeVito to me. Yeah. But. 2018 film, I feel like there was a little bit. There was more of a. Felt, I felt like there was just a little bit more conscious of just trying to make a horror film and not trying to layer in all this other crap and get lost in the mix of things. I don't know what this film's really trying to be. A bridge? <laughs> bridge has fallen apart like every other bridge in this country. Well, Illinois is famous for its dilapidated bridges. So these two gents live in the Myers home? Is that what yeah. we're... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Big John. His name is Big John. Eh, whatever. Oh, I see. I see, it's gay nicknames. Yeah, whatever. Just... He's wearing a puffy shirt. Oh, well. I don't want to be a pirate. Hmm. It is literally after midnight right now. Right. And these kids are playing a prank on Big John and Little John, the gay couple of the Myers house. Right. Again, clearly past cur curfew. It's, There's no parents around. It's 12.30 in the morning. Yes. Run where we are. It all ends at, at sundown. It's, it's kind of like a curfew type of thing that once the sun's down, trick-or-treating's over now. And these are the kids with the Halloween 3 masks. Yes. Which I'm more okay with than the other references because that one didn't live in the same... Continuity. Sure enough. Like, that one could still exist. Yeah. But, it, it, everyone it, who owned one 
potentially died back in 80 whatever so you know it, it, again it just comes back to stuff I've said before I don't mind homages as long as you're making a good enough film that stands on its own and the homages are just a little sort of like dressing the whole thing we're just right. paying a little good service to them or playing a little homage to it but it's like when you start just like leaning into everything it's like that's all the, that's all the iconography you have is stuff other people came up with 35 years before you made your film I just think if there's any movie in the franchise that they're going to homage, I'm the most okay with three. Okay. Only because it's not in the Michael Myers timeline. Right. Again, why are these three out at 1230 in the morning? Right. And why was Little John making a charcuterie board... At 12.30 in the morning. I have. <laughs> Not saying there's a bad time for a charcuterie board. However, I feel like that would have happened earlier in the evening. Just thinking out loud here. And if you don't want us to be conscious of the time, don't show me the time on a cell right. phone. Right. Right. I also don't know why there would be a news broadcast starting at 12 p.m., but what, or mid 12 a.m.? Yeah. That doctor storyline really pissed me off in the first yeah. one. Yeah. The 2018. Yeah. As I said before, in that one, is like. Just a contrivance to get Michael from point A to point B so they can manufacture a climax. This, the whole thing though, like, there's no reason to believe that Michael cares fuck all about Laurie Strode. Exactly. And, again, in this movie, I believe they try to make use of the mask being a thing. At least towards the cl climax, yeah. She uses it. Uses, Judy Greer's character uses it as bait to, to lead him along to the freaking mob beat down crap. And, yeah, about that. Yeah. Cowboy says, nay, nay. Yeah. <laughs> nice, I'll say this, nice piece of framing here. Throw him in the mirror so you can kind of have that... Yeah, I like it. ...composition. I mean... The least I'll say about this film, it's well photographed. It's got good gore effects. I didn't take much note of Carpenter's score in this one. Yeah, I didn't. It, it's it's not. The, 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 it's the previous one had a little bit more presence for it. It's minimal. I didn't feel like it was utilized as strategically as it should have been. This one, I, I only noticed maybe about I don't know, two or three cues in the whole thing. What? Why? Right. There is no reason to believe that he is stalking her. No. And this is gonna this is gonna start the whole thing. Aside from Judy Greer's character, who actually asks, acts very reasonably, responsibly, acts like a rational human being. They can't write any characters in this film. I have, I feel like there's just like. As we go along this whole thing, it's like, it just, I just can't be convinced that these are any real people whatsoever. When we start getting into the, the mob mentality stuff, it just feels so dunderheaded to me. She is being very logical. Right. Here.
it is kind of funny that Laurie Strode spends the entire movie in the hospital bed. Exactly. Much much like Halloween 2, 1981, that doesn't exist well, here. Well, it, it's got to be the whole thing. It's like, okay, they're, they're originally going to do the 2018 film back-to-back with a sequel, and they weren't planning a three-film arc. Okay. But then they said, well, let's just do one to see how it goes. And then they said, oh, well, not, we'll, we'll green light two sequels. So it's like, we know where, where we want to end the story, but we don't know how to do- fill in a second film to get there. So we just have to have Mori do nothing. She sits here and kind of monologues while she's awake. And the other part of it, she's just laying here asleep. In a lot of ways, it's yet another homage. Right. This this whole vigilante thing is her compound. Yeah. Okay, honestly, I ask you, do you think Anthony Michael Hall is a good actor? Uh I don't. I think in his he, adult, in his adult stuff, as much as he, I think he's an actor. I think he's an actor. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's not a he's not a bad actor, but I, I mean he's not right. a. My thing, I was watching. I just watched this thing. It's like I'm just trying to struggle. Is he just? Is it a bad, badly written character with bad dialogue, or is he just not good at doing it? I can't make a distinction. The, I, just, I just feel like I, hey, I almost need him to go fucking, like, Pleasance at Halloween 5 and just get stupid, over-the-top, ridiculous with it. The problem that I have is that he reminds me of Rick Schroeder. Mm. And I just keep seeing Ricky Schroeder. Like, mm. and I'm like... Then it's not, and I'm disappointed. Yeah. You know? Eh. I just I mean, don't... I, 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 like, mean, and it just kind of... In a way, it kind of hurts when it's like you're watching something and you just feel like it's so badly written, badly written characters, and someone is so earnestly putting their all into just being, trying to make, trying to act like what they're saying is a good, well written performance. That's my problem with this. It. Like, it is. It feels so badly written, but he's not making anything out of it. Instead, he's trying to act like it's a good, well-written role that has some sort of depth and well, logic and some sort of. I just. It just. In his defense, he's I, trying. I mean, right? Know, like just, he's trying just, to make it into something that it's not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it just. It's very harrowing to me. Just like I can't. The logic of the mob mentality at now close to one in the morning. Where, you know, this... Again, don't show me the time if you don't want me to know about the time. Sure. And these kids are still out here. Right, like, they're they're driving down the, the road and yelling at people on their own porches to get inside. Who's really still sitting on their porch at one in the morning? Right, everyone's tucked in by now. Go back to 2018 on my calendar. Halloween was a freaking Wednesday night. A Wednesday night. Ain't no one out at 1 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday. Right. If it was Saturday, then maybe we could have a case. Right. Or Friday. All these people got to work in the morning. They got school in the morning. Ain't no one out at 1 o'clock. I like that. That's mm. nice. And 
And that's him climbing on the roof as an homage to yeah. the first one. Mm-hmm. Where, again, she has no involvement in the events of the first one. Well, and she's, again, Other that's than, the exact same thing that happens to her in the first one. Right. That's why it's so on the nose. Including the hand He's of doing the, the exact same thing with the exact same character he did 40 years ago. It just... Right. It's just... No. Halloween, no. The first one, Halloween, why? No, that was Halloween 5. The... Uh. Yeah, he even did the hand thing it's, on the window. It's, it's like verbatim. The exact same thing with just two other people put in the passengers. Including Back someone seat. in a nurse costume. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> just fuck off. Yes. Halloween fuck off. Is the, actually... 2018 was Halloween and no. And then she's got to do this. He don't give a fuck. Who said who does that? It's why, not realistic. Why would she It's like from a bad action film. It's not like she was married to Dr. Loomis. No. She didn't even like the guy in the first film for fuck's sake. No. She was just the person tasked with driving the fucking car. Now that's a great kill. Yeah. But at the same time. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. The kills are great. The kills are great. Again, it just doesn't feel like Halloween to me. It doesn't feel like it at all. Michael has it survived just, like 82 bullets. Right, and that, that's ridiculous. It's kind of kind it's, of fun, though. It's fun. It just feels farcical to me to a degree. Yeah, it, just, yeah, it is. I, it just... I mean, we, we've had plenty of bad sequels, but at least they're... they're there were no one that tried to make it feel like the same thing that Carpenter was going for. Rosenhold tried in two, but they, they obviously they got the studio meddling and stuff like that, and they wanted to veer more towards the gory end type of thing, so they, it got out of his hands. Four feels pretty well in line with the style yeah. and the vibes of the first film. Six, and despite the, the the fucking thorn crap, at least stylistically, it had a feel that was comparable Similar, to, yeah. to Carpenter's original. And yeah. H2O, just style and vibe-wise, H2O might have, might have gone off a little bit more on the, the warm color tones and whatnot. But yeah, fine. At least, H2O at least half, I'd say at least half the sequels at least tried to follow along with the tone and the vibe of the original film. This one just like not even acknowledging... The the the, qual- the the style of it. I would. I mean, Michael's I, way super exposed to this film. They're not trying to make him feel like he's slipping through shadows or he's kind of creeping around in the background somewhere. He's just not even scary. If you think back to the the seventy eight, how many times did you actually see like full on Michael? I mean, it Barely. was it was a handful. I mean, they uh, most most of the film they're trying to, like just cut off little shafts of right. Well, yeah, cut I the mean, frame off where like when he's outside the schoolhouse, you don't see him above the the the, the shoulders. Right, you get the the you hedges. Know, you you get rarely the, even the backyard. See yeah, just very little type of stuff. They're chill, they were trying to make him feel like a specter to a degree, and this just feels like rando slasher guy. The best in in Halloween '78, my favorite reveal of Michael is the one where Laurie's in the foreground and oh, yeah, they, they, and the, he, see stepped, the light in slightly. he yeah, steps yeah, into yeah, the, the light and you just see the mask. They were trying to make him feel kind of mythical to a degree. Right. This is just like, it, there's not a feel for it at all. They're just, he, just a random guy with a knife walking around or just right. slashing. It just, there's no mystique. He's very Jason Voorhees in this movie. Right. Which, I guess they the, the studio thinks that that's what we're conditioned to want. Yeah. But and, and not even early Jason. It's more like fucking Jason, Jason Six, lives, yeah, New yeah, Blood type yeah. of Jason. Was like at the point where like for the most for, not Jason lives, but like when you get into Kane Hodder stuff, no one cares about the fucking characters anymore. They're just here to see the kills. Right. Well, the Kane Hodder ones are the worst ones. Sadly, he was fine, and I know yeah, he's renowned yeah. as the best Jason, right. but his films are the worst films. Yeah. Even Seven, which I enjoy still is at least seventh in the 
lineup. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's got, it got all his teeth cut out of it. Yeah. No, not true. I do like that she says that, though. Yeah. Also, she knows she's, she's fucking insane. Ray. So, the dad's name was Ray. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's her dad. Not oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I was thinking it was the other... Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to put Lori with a Ray, and I was like, no, that's... The father was basically a non-character in the last right, movie. Right, right. just there. I don't like that Tommy has become the face of the revolution. The, the vigilante body. Right. Yeah, I just... And maybe it has something to do with the fact that it's Anthony Michael Hall. Like, had they cast the original actor, who is a nobody, maybe it would feel more, like... Authentic? Authentic, to yeah. I don't know. I, you there, know, I actually there, felt there, bad when Lindsay Wallace got it because you're like, that's literally the same lady. Yeah, pretty, you know, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Now, this guy, again, we don't have any sort of investment in this character because we just learned that he... Lonnie? Right. Like, I don't know. I, like, right. It's just, this, this isn't the same actor, right, as the original 78 Lonnie. I doubt it. I I. I have the damnedest idea. I don't think so. But again, we didn't have any sort of like they didn't have that character. Didn't he was have just a, name. a just a floor, throwaway character. He didn't have a name in the original movie. He, he did, but it's like again, he was just he was there for two scenes just to have <laughs> a slight interaction for the 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 bully Tommy for a second, and then just have that little piece of fun with Loomis at at the Myers house, and just kind of break things up a tad bit for the tone. He wasn't meant to be a main franchise series character of some kind. They right. To hang half a plot on. I guess she's still alive. And who is this, Frank? Yeah, this is the cop that was bleeding out at the beginning. Oh, okay. Who was clearly dead in the last film because, you know, he gets stabbed in the throat and he's gushing blood for, I don't know, an hour. And then right. he's still alive right. somehow. And they try to indicate here that they had some sort of relationship? Some sort of relationship. You know, he is a sheriff, right? Cause they, is he the acting sheriff? I think I. Because who is Brackett? Like, well, Brackett's just a fucking security guard. Here. Oh, okay, got it. I'm talking about the, the. He was wasn't he the sheriff in the last film when the two of them meet at when they're going I, into the house? Yeah, I think at, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So they they were establishing something there as well. So the the biggest bumbling idiot can't shoot cop. Right. Becomes the sheriff. <laughs> Sounds like Halloween Five. Yes, it Bunch does. Of bumbling fucking ninkum poops around. Well, that's because they killed all the cops in four, and so they had to hire all new yeah. cops. Feels so bad for both star man, Sheriff Meeker. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It really would have been the best had Laurie, even in this in this continuity. 
married Ben Tramer. Mm hmm. Because in this character, in this timeline, Ben Tramer's still alive. Unless he died of a heart attack. God knows. Maybe he ain't, he's the one who actually decided to leave fucking town. You know, the smart one. Well, sure. Maybe he did. I do think it's interesting that they never bring him up again in this... Well, mm. we haven't seen the new one yet. That's why I'm reserving things. There's no way he's still alive after getting no. in the jugular like that. I don't know. It just Yeah, again it's more callbacks. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense that I was off seeing my my dead daughter in the hospital that I should have He didn't He in, saw his in, daughter in the prologue that we saw here that happens exactly right after the end of the first film. Right. Did they even find all the other bodies and everything? It's so complicated. It's so convoluted. I don't know. But he's saying, like, I should have shot him in the head and stuff like that. And I do agree that Brackett's character would have been completely distraught. Yes. Because he is right, at the right. house when she gets carted out. That's in the Halloween 2, which is not in continuity. Oh, wait, that so was... We, that's the thing I'm trying to put on my head. It's like, okay... Oh, you're right, that was in 2. At what point does everyone find all the bodies across the street and find out that your daughter is dead and all that type of stuff? Wouldn't he... Right, he all wasn't... We, all, we, don't even, we don't know anything. You're there's, right. There's still a, a section of stuff after Michael disappears, get, falls off the balcony, and Loomis... We don't know what happens with Loomis until he goes back to the Myers house and they've already captured him. There's a big empty space there that is like, I don't know. You're right, that was in two. Right. Damn it. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, we know. God's sakes. Charlie Cyphers. Wait. He might be the actual... Sheriff. Well, I, mean, I think it's like state police. Oh, stay right, statey. Yeah. Cowboy, yeah. Meanwhile, she's going to have a stroke. Right. When he gets here, what does that mean? Why is everybody so insistent that he's on his way to kill Lori? He doesn't know Lori from anybody. Yes. I understand. He killed my daughter. I want to kill him back. Okay. Yeah. I understand. He tried to kill me 40 years ago. I, like, I get Tommy's anger. You know, I understand that portion of it. But again, <clears throat> Michael, my biggest problem, Michael has no reason Everyone, to have any beef with anybody. Right, exactly. All the characters are projecting this onto Michael. Michael is Michael, not following the logic of everyone who is putting it on him. Right, exactly. They're perceiving all this shit, <clears throat> despite the fact that Michael's not doing that at all. He's just... Again, he's just going after whoever the hell you put in his peripheral vision. Which is exactly what the idea was behind the original movie, is that he just happened to be seeing people... Yeah, he, and, he, he was just hanging out at his house, secluded there, and then she comes up and he's just like, I'm gonna follow this person. That's the, all the logic that was needed to, to follow along whatever he was going on. And this. Yeah, a nurse just leaves fucking vials of freaking medicine laying around and it doesn't fucking happen. It no, does it does not happen. No, she would be fired for that. I've been in a lot of doctor visits this last year. I was going to say, you were recently... I've been a lot. In the last year, This yeah. has never happened. 
They don't just leave needles and freaking vials of medicine laying around for people to just stick themselves and do God knows whatever to them. That, these are people who've gone to freaking medical school for a better part of a decade and spent thousands of dollars. They don't make these little stupid things happen. She still has the knife? This isn't in evidence? Oh, no, because the, the, the granddaughter just left it at her bedside and someone just left it allowed to stay there because whatever. Because this film has no sense of reality to it. Now it's close to like 2 o'clock in the morning. It has to be. Big John and Little John are having a gay old time. Get it? Uh, Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be two in the morning at this point. Or at least one. Like one thirty, maybe. Well, no shit, Halloween's over. I will say... I don't mind the idea that he has found his own his old home and wants to reclaim it and be damned whoever is living sure, in it whatever. currently. I can I can buy that as a plot point. Hmm. But I don't know like again, you have to pick a lane. Is he going after Lori or is he going after his home? I feel like going like going back to your house is much more logical. Yeah. I'm not saying it's good logic, but I'm saying it's much more logical than the alternative of I have a death wish for this lady that means nothing to me. I get it. It's something that feels like it was done better in Halloween 6. That, like, Lori's uncle or something like that, he's involved with a realty company that can't sell the house because of the history behind it, so he ends up buying it for his own family and doesn't tell the family about it. But then, because they're living in that thing, Lou is like, well, you're going to be targeted by Michael because he's back now. <laughs> he's back now. <laughs> and that whole and that, that whole plot at least had some kind of suspense and, and tension to it. It's like, they're playing these two characters up enough as kind of comedy characters to a degree that it feels like I'm... And I don't really have any suspense about what's going on with them. Because you just know they're going to die anyway. Right. Did they... I feel like they've given us a scene or two here with no purpose other than to attempt to get us to care about them. Right. Even though we don't. No. I mean, I, I shouldn't say we don't care about them. Because they're at least more interesting than some of these people. Like, sure. I actually, again, going back to my previous logic, I think these two, be, just because of the fact they're living in the house, makes them more interesting of a character than even Lindsay Wallace, who sure. has done nothing but go to a bar every Halloween and, and mi commiserate yeah. with other town folk yeah. about her plight. When she was nine years old or something. Right. Yeah. You know, at least these two have a reason to be on the screen. Sure, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but it also comes down, okay, like, they, they know someone's now stuck in their house. All they're going to grab is knives. They're not going to call the police. The other option, though, in theory. So. You're right. The other option, though, would be that Michael just shows up there. And we, right. uh, we're, we have no idea who's living in the house other than right. the production design tells yeah. us that it's currently occupied. Right. And then he, You could have transplanted the couple from earlier when he's the, in the, the bathroom right. and, and, and the stabby, stabby stuff in the back. You could have transplanted that to these, the, the, this location. They, the older couple, right. right. Which, again, that entire scene, completely unnecessary. Yes. That had no bearing on anything. No. What are you doing out of bed, ma'am? Right. Just. Why do they think it's Michael? And. Just because he's that, there's some guy here that they don't recognize, they think it's Michael. And 
But the thing is... How is nobody arresting Tommy Doyle for, like, inciting a riot? Inciting a riot, but... I don't think it's Public like, endangerment. My whole thing of them going off against this escapee guy, they clearly showed the faces of all the escapees from the bus on the TV. If they all know Michael Myers from back to front for the last 40 years, how do they not know what the hell he actually looks like? Well, why would they know what he looks like? Because he's been in the mental institution. Yeah, but when they were in the bar, um, right. they had they the showed the, thing. the pictures. They were showing right. all the, the photos of the different guys who escaped, which right. included a blurred out version of Michael Myers. Right, so clearly they, they would know. They saw what he looked like, so now they're, look, they're chasing a guy who's half the size of Michael in a completely different face, completely in body shape, claiming they think it's Michael Myers. So they fucked themselves, because had they just not shown that on the news... You give logic to the idea that they don't know who it, what, he, what he is. Potentially. Like, they could go, maybe that's him. We don't know. We've never seen him before. A, it at least leaves a sliver of That would have been something. much more believable. A sliver. It would have been a step in the right direction. In like, a way. I mean, again, it's like the fact these people apparently are obsessed with Michael Myers for the last 40 years. Right, they illogically, right. They had to have seen right. a fucking photograph sometime in the last four decades and know what the guy looks like. Right. Or at least have an idea that he was, you know, I six mean, foot Lori two. I knew or... that the guy was being transferred out of the freaking place to somewhere else. At least... The, right, how the, did she the, know that information? There had to be a news article somewhere. No one just called her up out of nowhere and told her, hey, they're moving them. Right. This is the time and place they're moving them. Just come, come by, do whatever you want to. Are we led to believe that they have a vanity in the exact same position that Judith Myers yeah. also had the vanity? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very gratuitous. Yeah, I mean, I don't just, mind it, but... Yeah, I mean, just just the fact that, like, they... Like, yeah, is that an homage they, to Three when he does the eye thing to the guy in the hospital? I don't know. I don't know. It just... Because actually, that's one of the scenes I remember very vividly from three. Right. The stab wound to the armpit's nice. Yeah. Oh, hey. Here's your carpenter score. A little bit, yeah. This, this is absurd. It's absurd. It really is absurd. Uh, if anybody has been in a hospital post 9-11, we'll say, yeah. you know that security is... There's security everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Doors are locked. There aren't this many people in There's the whole goddamn town. you have to use and everything. I it's mean, one of the more... It's two in the morning. Meanwhile, a drunk guy from the bar has incited a riot with all the townspeople. All right. I mean... Who is under no... He's got immunity from, apparently, from being held culpable in anything here. Meanwhile, this well, insane I, asylum person is running through hallways in the... Ho like, right. shut the fuck up. I can't run through hallways in a hospital without somebody... Oh, no. Let alone... 300 people running through the hall. I barely could have left my hospital room without someone coming by and doing something when I was in there in January. Meanwhile, she's injected herself with leftover medicine, put on her own right. clothes, walked through the hallway. And the, the morgue just happens to be randomly somewhere where you can just look in on what's happening. Right. Right. I challenge anybody that's listening to this right now to walk into your local hospital and just know where the morgue is and look through the window. Right. Like, it doesn't happen. No, it does not. <laughs> and the police... Are doing are here, fuck well, off. What are they doing to prevent any of this? Nothing. They're not trying to stop the riot. No. They're participating in the riot. Right. Ow. Those... Like, I realize that's a stunned person, yeah. but that looked Ouch. like it hurt. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the guy from our Home Alone commentary that did the falls on the stairs. Oh, ow. On the concrete, and you're like, yeah. he's like, oh, let's just jump in the air and land on the concrete. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Like, there are people out there that just 
I'm like, oh, I'll fall down the stairs, whatever, that's fine. And tell me, does it look like Donald Pleasance and Danny DeVito had a fucking kid? A clone or something? I still think it looks like uh, the Howard brother. Clint Howard? Clint, Clint Howard, yeah. No, he's, he's fugly, man. He's gangly. Now he's, he's now he's gonna tell his, his thing. right. Let's do another flashback. This film is so packed with flashbacks. It just you just saw this earlier. We literally just saw this. Yeah. Now they're adding this thing is like they all just started. Well, I don't know how logical that is. Well, like Loomis going to execute him in front of everyone. Right. Loomis. That was not Loomis in the first film. That's sequel Loomis. That doesn't exist in this continuity. That's like Halloween 4 or 5 Loomis. Right. L- right. The Loomis from part one. The has got to put a muzzle now, on him or something to stop him from going crazy. Granted, he did shoot him six times. Sure. But, but I was also in the process of the guy of Lori being attacked. Yes, he was trying to defend someone. Right. Yes. Which means there are no more bullets left in that gun. Mm. <laughs> right. Right. So even if he wanted to execute him outside the house, that was one plus two plus two plus one, not one plus two plus one yeah, plus one. Know. And now we've got this Yeah. only I can be the one to kill him bullshit. <sighs> Again, linking the two when there's no link to be had. It's the thing. It, it feels so far up its own ass. It really does. It really I mean, does. I don't... I, I really just do not want to disparage Jamie Lee Chris, but you listen to her on a lot of these interviews. She sounds... She's trying to make this out like it's the most socially conscious commentary and everything that's going on at the time. She's very proud of these movies. I mean, th- this thing was shot in 2019, but then she's going on the press store saying it has, it's a commentary on Black Lives Matter. It's a commentary on the Trump administration. All what? the stuff that hadn't happened by the time they made the film. They're trying to retcon that they had intentions Social to follow this stuff on that hadn't happened yet, but now it's a commentary on all this stuff because it's a masterpiece. She literally says, this film is a masterpiece. This middle one? Yes. Or the new one? She says, Halloween Kills it is, is a masterpiece. Well, n- she literally n- said that on a Skype interview on some TV show somewhere. This is, film is a masterpiece. The Godfather is a masterpiece. Uh, Jaws is a masterpiece. I was listening to. A, I would uh, Halloween seventy eight is a masterpiece. And I heard I was listening to an uh, interview she did for the twenty eighteen film. She's trying to equate Laurie's trauma with stuff like well, soldiers coming back from World War Two and all this other stuff, and just like it, I don't want to dispute her. I like maybe that she's just like just vehemently as passionately as she possibly can to promote the film, but it feels like it's. It just feels pretentious to me that she's 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 equating it way too harshly on this type of stuff. Now I will. Because you don't need that to sell the film. No one's coming into this thing needing to see that stuff or thinking they need to see that. It is entirely possible. It's entirely possible that that is a PR move, right? Thrust upon her by the the studio or her agent or somebody in an attempt to. Yeah, it just. Try to put like a best foot forward situation. It's one of those things. Like it just, it just feels like it. It shades her in a in a bad light for me. It really just, man. I don't, I don't want to disparage her because she is a very good actress. We've She's got done this some very great work over her career. I just feel like it just, it puts a sour note on things. This mob mentality here is when the film comes out and it's this fucking bad. It just makes her look worse. I don't understand this sentimental music either it's nice right. it's pretty again again there, there there are moments that seem fine in a vacuum but we put them in a contest of what context what's going on here it's like it's terrible 
I just don't understand how this many people could get it wrong. Right. <laughs> there's literally a hundred people in the hospital and a hundred people outside. There's fucking doctors in this mob. People who took a hippocratic, and police. A hippocratic oath to do no harm and they're storming through this thing knocking people over in a fucking violent mob raid to fucking murder a guy. There's also police involved. Yes. It just... It's completely outside the realm of any believability. Look at that. Yeah. That unbelievable. What a, an effect. I mean, it's gross as fuck, but All right. it looked awesome. I do kind of like that they kept the... The logo, the yeah, HMH. The same thing from the second film. Yeah. Now we've spent an hour and 20 minutes. Like, when he knew the entire time that it wasn't him. Now like, he's turning us into monsters. He has to spend. Bell out the theme. We're trying to expose it to the audience. I mean, it's it's so dunderheaded, like I said. The concept, as executed, is so bad because it, it just, I can't buy into it. And now all of a sudden it's, oops, I'm sorry? It's, oops, I'm sorry. No one's held accountable right. either. Nobody. Right. And in like a minute and a half here, Tommy's going to say, oh, I still so want to go after him. They don't learn anything from it. They're still going out there to hunt them down after they just cause collateral damage and just turn into a mindless set of fucking killers. And interestingly enough, a lot of that premise is also based on the Ben Tramer storyline from Halloween 2. A little bit, yeah. Like... Like oh, there's Lewis goes crazy hunting down because he's wearing a similar mask. Right, like oh, there's thinks. there's a guy. Let's go after him. Right. Um. That wouldn't work. He's switching the guns out, so it's like okay, no, he shot himself. They have serial numbers and they're registered. Well, it's also seventy eight, so maybe not. Maybe, but I don't know. It just. He's not after you, you cunt. No, he <laughs> said no. You no, he's not. There, here it comes. He's not. Now the film, right here, right now, completely invalidates the entire conception they've been trying to hammer into the audience. Her, that her the entire two trauma of are last, linked together. The last forty years. Right. He's clearly saying right now. No. He was never looking after you. The doctor forced the confrontation between you. He was never hunting you. He was never coming after you. And how does this bumbling cop know that? You know what I mean? Like, how does he know this story because about... The, but, well, because his fucking partner told it to him four decades ago. Oh, I see. But it doesn't explain how he knew it. Right. Loomis never mentioned anything like that. All well, he, how would Loomis know? All Loomis said was that he would... He was sitting in a room, looking at a wall, looking past the wall. Loomis, not Loomis, seeing the wall. Loomis was never in Haddonfield before no, the events of the Halloween but '78. But he was his, his psychiatrist for 15 years. Right, but not in Haddonfield. He doesn't know. He said he never spoke. Right, he never spoke to him. How would he know anything so about how, what happened at '78? So how do these guys know? Fuck all. Their son gets committed, and they probably sold the house and moved the five states away. Oh, fuck all I know. And if the entire premise that they've debunked now is saying that they're not actually linked, if that is true, how did the events of 2018 happen where he shows up at her compound? Just because Sartan drove, locked him in the car and drove him there. Right. That's the only. That, that's exactly what the, 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 the cop there was saying is like, no, he was never after you. The doctor right. drove him over to you to, to, to throw you into this confrontation thing. There was never a link between you guys. Everything you think you've been thinking for the last 40 years, it's not true. So it's like you just threw out the entire concept of this entire trilogy, you know, that they have any kind of association with each other whatsoever. You have to get hot about it. Her line about none of us are innocent, 
Like, that, I guess, is social commentary, yeah, yeah. I, in a way. Um, but it's not good enough to call it a masterpiece or it's try to all. project it onto current actual social problems. No. This is a fucking movie. This is entertainment. Right. In sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Right. As they say. Like not everything has to be interpreted. Right. You you're not you're not making some kind of social political commentary like I don't know, Spike Lee or freaking Oliver Stone or someone else like right, that or right. making these big heady films or whatnot. You're a fucking gore. You're a gore film. Can we go back to the idea that he like cheated on her like six hours ago? Why is she still friends with him? He threw mm. her phone in the pudding for fuck's right. sake. Wouldn't she be still hot about that? You, you ruined I, my phone? I don't know. I would be. I'm, I'm focused on the fact that, again, we just had this giant mob scene where everything went awry, and they're, they're, they're trying to express some sort of regret for it, but then they still go off and do the exact same thing like, like it never happened. They don't bring the state police... Again, it's... The, 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 we can, if you want to bring real world in this whole thing... Sure, let's do it. If you have some mass... Murder, some serial killer running around town killing people, masses amounts of people, you'd call in every resource you have. You wouldn't, wouldn't have. You've seen what, six cops in this town? We saw six cops in this town as of this movie. Yeah. So, I mean, let's bring, again, bring in the real world. We've had some tragedies, like violent tragedies happen in the state in a very recent time where they called in, like, police and support officials and healthcare doctors and nurses and whatnot from every available neighboring area to come in and help with triage and hunt down people and get people safe and just protect people. One, one reality, that's what you do in this situation. The entire town would be swarming with cops. They'd be calling calling state police. Also, every in this, neighboring town. In this day and age, in, in 2018, if this is currently set in 2018, mm -hmm. there is a 24-hour news cycle. Yeah. This would be national news at this point. Sure. The uh, the escaped, turned over bus. Yeah. And the murder of nine firemen. Yeah. Would be national news. Yeah. And every fucking TV reporter and national outlet, news outlet, mm -hmm. would be descending upon Haddonfield, Illinois. Yeah, in a hot minute. You'd have choppers down here, all this type of stuff. And sweeping the entire town. And like you said, we literally... As we recorded this, this is coming, I mean, this is dropping in October, Halloween of 20, yeah. 2022. The 4th of July of 2022, there was a national tragedy. Yes. F an hour from where we sit. Yes. That, That's exactly what I'm referring to. That April. became national news yes. in seconds. And they, almost like instantaneously, there were cops and fire people and there were nurses and doctors just running in to help out everyone they possibly could in the situation to, to save lives and protect people and hunt down those who are responsible. And you know what didn't happen? The police and the doctors trying to vigilante go exactly. after this guy. Exactly. And so if you want to tell me that this is social commentary, go fuck yourself. Yes. Because it's not. <laughs> it's not. That's why it's not believable. That's why it's not convincing that any of this stuff, that they've written any realistic human beings in this film. None of these people react like a human being. Well, I've claimed that for years and years and years. Right. But like, I mean, and just seeing this whole thing, I, 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 aside from Judy's career, Judy Greer's character, who's actually acting like a rational human right. being, everyone else in this film just like, I can't, I don't like any of these people. I don't care about them. There's not a single other character in this entire film that feels like they are written like a real human being, reacting in any type of realistic way. Even consistent from the, the previous film, the franchise, anyone feels like they're the same character. Even, like I said, Michael doesn't feel like Michael to me. No. They're not presenting I, him like Michael Myers. They're not having him act the same way. 
because you having him do things that Michael usually doesn't do, it even the body language just feels weird to me. Everything just feels completely off. This is one of those instances where had you just put a different guy under a different mask right. and changed the names, yeah, you'd have a decently okay story. Something it wouldn't. But the fact that it's trying to it would just be another terrible horror film. So like right. Instead of legacy, a major franchise trying to milk you for some more money. Now, in his defense, he didn't really have time to react that his dad had been killed. Mm. Oh. What, did, were they trying to indicate in the subtitles that that record was still playing? Yeah. So, you're trying to tell me that this is all happening within... Half uh, an hour, maybe? Tops. I'd say 25 minutes. Yeah. From, it would be skipping at this point. Just right, right along be, the edge of the, the right, final. Right, right. It, well, it stops at the right. end. It literally okay. turns off when you get to the okay. In, inside. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. They don't... Ow. They don't know how people act or react. I don't expect them to have any logic in terms of electronics. And again, like I said, they're, they're not bad kills, but they're so overly top, over the top, and gratuitous. Like, and again, I don't give a shit about these fucking characters worth a sh- worth a goddamn. Like that sequence in the hallway up there is like that would have been a fine sequence with a little suspense if I gave a shit. But this point, I don't think I actually I, I'm going to walk back my statement here. I don't think that they gave enough time for his reaction to the dad. You just saw Lonnie a little bit. Yeah, like, you didn't even register that it was Lonnie, other than the fact that he yelled "dad." Yeah, like I don't recall seeing Lonnie get killed. Maybe we were ranting about uh, the whatever. other thing, but. Leave him alone. Another you person just stands there while they watch someone else get murdered. They don't do anything. Two minutes ago, she didn't have any problem just running up to Michael and start stabbing him in the, in the freaking torso. Just, I, I just everything's very inconsistent and contrived to just make the scene function the way you want it to function. Really? Yeah, I just... Really? It's the, it's the fact that there's no atmosphere in this film. There's no suspense. There's no tension. It's just it's dumb su- idea after dumb idea. It's such a stupid character. Right, it's such a modern horror movie. I mean... It's just a gore film. That's all it is. And that's not what Halloween is. The few times they try to go more gratuitous, like with the theatrical good of Halloween 6, where they try to they add in more gore footage because they think that's what the audience wants and butcher the rest of the film, it just didn't feel right. He doesn't want the mask. He doesn't give right. a shit about the mask. But they're going to nick on that because he's going to just start chasing her regardless. Why is she telling Michael the story of him Again, killing his sister? The film's got to expot. This entire film is basically exposited every moment, almost every o- moment from the first film, if it hasn't done a flashback to it. And to your point, we've seen way too much of Michael. Yeah. Including. There's an, like I said, there's full no, sequences here with no mask. Absolutely no mystique whatsoever. And actually, now that you've taken the mask off of him, it looks worse. Yeah. Because... He's not an entity anymore. Right. He's just a dude. He's just a dude. He's just an old man who normally wouldn't walk like that. No, just... It all feels wrong. 
absolutely everything feels wrong with Michael in this film. It feels like it's a copycat or something. It's like it's, it's trying fuck. to be a parody or something, but it's serious. I don't know. And we're still back to the soft, stupid mob shit. They do have the Illinois license plates, so that's nice. Hmm. They took care of this entire subplot in Halloween 4 when they accidentally killed Ted Hollister. It's like, we're no more. We're, we're, we're just no more firing shotguns into bushes. She's got a fucking iron. A tire iron? No, like a fucking iron. Oh! To iron her shirt with. Why is he putting the mask back on? And it goes the, right back to the beginning of this, the, the, the previous film where they got the podcasters there trying to trying to play the moment up to make it seem like the mask has power over Michael despite the fact Michael completely shows that it doesn't. But they keep, they keep batting this back and forth that it does and both doesn't. Well, that seems to be the theme here of these movies is that they don't... They can't they're, make they're, up their mind about which way they want to go, so they just do everything. They do fact. both, right. On so many different levels. The the Lori thing, the random killing thing, is one dichotomy. The mask, no right. mask dichotomy. I mean, where we said, said the previous film felt like it was just like first draft, this feels like they just took the frickin' notes off the frickin' bulletin board and just shot it. How about go be with your mother? Or how about where are the cops? Again. Are we going to arrest him or are we going to kill him? Is it vigilante? What's your end game? Right. Granted, evil dies tonight. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Just so, one stab. <laughs> so, that scene is so fucking ridiculous. Evil dies tonight. Like it's the most fucking. <laughs> reverent, most, most profound thing in the world. Now, let's think about this. The third film, which is coming out as we release this. Ends, yes. Halloween Ends. To me, that title indicates that Michael Myers is going to perish at the end of that film. Right. So, again, you've put a spoiler in the title. So, why do I care about the movie up until the last five minutes? Right. And in the trailers, they... I've not watched the trailer. But I'm, I'm not going to you know, say too much. Just uh, The tra trailer almost make it, makes it feel like Lori's going to die, too. It almost feels like she's going to die in like the first act of the film. Well, that would be reminiscent of Re Resurrection. Resurrection. Because they show almost a very, very minimal dialogue of Lori except her fight with Michael. So that feels like... You're not showing us the third act here. This feels like the end end of the first, first my, act or some shit. My question is, how is Michael Myers so impervious to... Right. Well, even going think, back to, to one, like, the brilliance, I mean, the masterpiece that is Halloween yes. 1, ends with him getting shot six times, which you think nobody can live through, mm -hmm. and yet he disappears in the night. Right. He's still out there. Again. Roll credits. Mystique. Myst aura. None of that left. So... And, and now, even, okay, let's pretend nothing else happens and we go to Halloween 2018. What the fuck is that? Yeah, just now she's seeing ghosts. Seriously? Um, it's like, if in this next film that they're trying to convince us that Michael's going to die, how, is he, how the hell has he survived this? Right. To find out something that's going to kill him in the next film, that's going to drop him in a vat of acid. Well, first of all, he survived the fire from the first one. Right. The 2018. So he's been shot. He's been beaten to shit. Right. Set on, almost set on fire. He was shot in this one. Yeah. Or I guess, excuse me, in 2018 he was shot. Uh, yeah. Because Karen shot him up the stairs from the panic room. Yeah. Which he survived. Then burned... The mask didn't melt, did not melt to his face. Yeah, he's been stabbed, he's been beaten with bats and all the other shit. Hockey sticks. Right. And... 
I mean, I was I was just listening to the end of the Halloween Five commentary because it, it it had had this had this line I said when you go too far in a franchise, you get to the point where nothing's believable to kill Michael. Right. You've thrown way too much at him to make like. There's no more stakes. Right. There's no stakes, and whatever you come up with that actually is the end mm-hmm. it doesn't become believable because of everything that prede- preceded it. And also the fact by this, that by this point, the franchise has been rebooted like four fucking times. So they're like, oh, you're going to kill the next one? Oh, well, they'll probably just reboot they'll the They'll just start it again. Years and then he'll be back and we'll just follow a new timeline. Right. So that doesn't mean anything anyway. Is this real? Yeah. So Karen gets it? She just goes up in the, in the entire thing because she thinks she sees some kind of ghostly image of young Michael. Where he slipped past all the, the cops out here and all that type of stuff who are swarmed around the area. It's got to be like four in the morning at this point. Hmm. And so now he's just... Yeah. In his house, he's going to barricade himself in the house. So this is where the new one's going to pick up Lori in the hospital room. No, it pick, picks up four years later. Oh, it's... Oh, fuck So now you. this is like... I don't know. So he's just... Oh, my God. No, I don't know if it's actually going to be part of the film, but the things they were saying in interviews, like, oh, it's going to address the, the COVID-19 pandemic. No, it's, it's going to exist in a post-pandemic world. Fuck we're going to have commentary on you. that. Why? Fuck you. Maybe it's not involved with the film. Maybe it's just hyperbolic crap they talked about three years ago. I don't know. That's stuff they said in interviews a year or two ago. That's horseshit. Um, I am very excited to watch the new one just because Bob Odenkirk. Hmm. And PJ Souls is apparently in there somewhere. Well, I guess just just because they used her image on the TV, the news broadcast. Well, Bob, the character of Bob, is PJ's boyfriend. Boyfriend that got killed. So apparently, Bob Odenkirk of Better Call Saul fame uh, played. They substituted his thing because I guess I don't know, David Gordon Green wasn't his available friend or something. I don't know. Weird. Just ridiculous. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. Just... Uh, okay. Anyway, but I... I'm going to admit here, I, I was getting up to the last half hour. I just I just had to start fast-forwarding through parts of the film because, like, this is so bad. Wow. It was so atrocious. I would fast-forward through a minute or two because, like, I, I don't need to sit through the slow-motion thing of the guy trying to jump out the window. I already know what happens. I just... I just... I was just getting so... That's incredible. It was so atrociously written. I mean, just from early on in the film, I was just like, this film is so badly written, just scene after scene of bad screenwriting. Just bad dialogue. <laughs> terrible, Excuse me. terribly created characters. It's just an irresponsible plot. It's just a sloppy mess. And I, I give them credit, I guess, for trying to refute that idea that it was actually about Lori the whole time. But you've you've told me that the premise of the last 40 years is that, you know, he had some sort of investment in the mask and her. You can't just throw that away with one line of dialogue. Just, yeah, and then again, it's, it's that was the final confrontation between Lori and Michael and the next one. So it's like, But it's years later. Just none of it. Rich Baloney is a great that, name, by the way. I want to be named Rich Baloney. I can't believe they gave this director an Exorcist trilogy. Why? Why would they do that? Because the movies make money, despite the fact that it's garbage. Dan Fink is also a good name. I, I need f- freaking to show up on set and go fucking lunatic. I've got an idea. How about we write a brand new story? Aaron Rodgers, who was a video consultant. Well, as well, he, he was the MVP. <laughs> I bet he was also the MVP of this movie. Go, Pat, go. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm i a glutton for punishment, so I will absolutely watch the new one 
as soon as it drops mm. because it's on Peacock and I already pay for Peacock, so yeah, I don't I'll, have to. I don't I'll have to watch it because we got we'll have to rip this bandaid off in fucking January we, when yeah, they drop the disc. Is when they drop the disc, we'll be on the lookout, guys. We'll 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 do the the third yeah. one. Yeah, it'll we'll do it brand new. Yeah, and uh, footage from Halloween two. What? I think it because they. Sh- I think they showed the moment where Annie gets pulled out from the freaking gurney and brackets there looking at her or something like that. So they repurposed it despite the fact it's not in continuity. I see. Okay. Makes sense. I mean, what you're saying makes sense. The idea doesn't make sense. Okay. Uh, All right, I'm done with this. It was the worst... Halloween film I could mostly sit through because I I'm you like zombie films I don't like well them. I can't I couldn't sit through any of that zombies shit. zombies Halloween remake the first one is in my it might be number two for me in the franchise I fucking love zombies Halloween Halloween two from Rob Zombie is in my opinion the worst one worse than this okay it's still the bottom. Nothing is nothing will usurp it as mm-hmm. in the in the bad category. So the dichotomy there is so like I think one is brilliant and mm. I I think I don't know I love that I'm sorry that you don't like it because it's I, I I just can't stand zombies writing I just can't get through it. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's amazing how they were able to turn like add something to the story. Yeah, but. Anyway, Sorry. in terms of the ones I actually sat through for the majority of, I just, I think this this is the worst experience I've had watching one of them because I just felt like just mountains of just bad writing, bad scenes, bad characters, stupid ideas. There, and again, there's not even an attempt to make it anything resembling what Halloween is supposed to be based on the first film. Right. Which is thing is supposed to carry on that legacy directly from, and it doesn't resemble it worth a crap to me. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. No, just it's a bad film. This entire really, really trilogy bad. is I don't is want this disc anymore. Worthless. The only other film, I'm not saying it's as bad as this. The only other film that I bought, we did a commentary on, I sold was Texas Chainsaw Next Generation. 100% agree with I that. I didn't want to get rid of this thing cuz I don't I had no interest in ever watching this again. All right. Preteen right. one looks better in comparison to this a lot. Yeah. It's a lot more competent than this one. It, it needed a few extra drafts to shake things up, but it had it had elements that had potential. Right. I probably have no interest in, well in buying executed. any of them. This one, fuck off, no more. So. Yeah. All right, then we'll see you in for the next one. Take care, guys. Adios. Thank you.